No, not Faramir. Dude, he's just a dude who's trying to show his chunk. Do you see this? He's gonna use. Oh my goodness, they're killing the Balrog. They're killing the Balrog. Run, run, run. What is up, guys, and welcome to the Beyond Sanity Anna. My name is Shinx, and today we are going to cast a 2v2 replay on a beautiful map, Mouth of the Endwatch, in battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 1.06 between Gondor and Gondor versus Mordor and Rohan. I mean, obviously, that's gonna be a good matchup for the Rohan Mordor team because it's a gigantic map and Mordor will get the chance to capture multiple outside settlements, including those outposts. And it should be kinda easy if you can survive the first couple of minutes into the game to get very strong in the mid to late game. And Mordor will have the chance to recruit three flying creatures, which is gonna be awesome on a map like this because Nazgûls can fly over the hills, and that means insane amount of mobility, which is gonna be kinda rough for the double mortar team to deal with in long terms, but keep in mind that double mortar will have the chance to recruit Gandalf not once, but twice, and two Gandalf Dwights on your team can actually hit like a truck. We will see who's gonna win. I mean, Rohan is also pretty S tier, pretty much in a 2v2 situation, like in this map, because you will have the chance to recruit so many additional, you know, swordmen from your farms outside, which Gondor can't. So Gondor has only two starting soldiers. Yes, they are a bit stronger than peasants. And yes, Gondor will have the heal power point to make them even more effective, but you will eventually get outnumbered big time and it's gonna be rough to contest the map control battles at the very beginning of the game until you get your stable up on the field. So the Mordor play is kind of pushing forward. He has this settlement and also this settlement behind. Might also capture this one. I mean, team communication, is very important, Rohan could easily give up this settlement for his ally, and Mordo with three lumber mills outside, holy guacamole, you know, that's gonna be like a Christmas, early Christmas for the Mordo faction player. I mean, I will be used, and most of the soldiers are actually taking so much damage, he is gonna be used, Godom is also very great in a defensive situation like this, he's surprisingly tanky, and he deals not like his damage output is not the best but not the worst either he's you know because he's so tanky he can absorb lots of pressure and damage and with the orcs being recruited additionally from the orc pit the model player should be able to defend this no problemo in the meantime the white model player was capturing this one and also this one but rohan is putting as mentioned at the beginning of the game lots of pressure because of the additional you know peasants he will be able to recruit um, stable building up now after three farms inside and one, two, three, four farms outside. That means he has the maximum food bonus for the for the Rohirrim. They're gonna cost now only 420 each, which is quite cheap in compared to the Gondonites, which they're gonna they're gonna cost 640 each because Gondor has only two farms inside and what two farms outside. And generally, the Gondonites are a bit more expensive in compared to Rohirrim because Rohan is only seven spots inside the castle, while Gondor has nine. So Rohan's early game is definitely more powerful in compared to Gondor, but keep in mind that Rohan has to invest one power point into the draft, which is only a, like a good early game power point. It's gonna fall off late game big time, while heal doesn't fall off at all. Heal is gonna be always very strong, and actually will get even stronger and more impactful later on when it comes to save Gondor knights on, in, on you know even your heroes like Gandalf. Very smart move, um, he will be pressuring this, but with the wood bonus of the three Lammermills, look at them, you know, the beast from the Mordor player. He has like three, five slaughterhouses, he has a Haradrim palace, which means he can easily creep this. Now capture the outpost, put those Haradrims inside the outpost, which is gonna be almost impossible for the Gondor player to destroy at the beginning of the game. Like Gondor Knights, they cannot go for the outpost if there are Haradrims on top of that. You know, you need at least upgrades, but even then, it's gonna be still tough. Because citadels in this game are quite resistant against crush damage. Basically, the horses, they almost deal no damage to the citadels, especially from the outposts. The outpost citadels are so tanky. So capturing them and putting Haradrims inside of that is going to be like an amazing situation for the model player. I mean, Gondor is kind of struggling. He's going to creep. Creeping is very important in this game. You will get additional money, which will help, you know, Gondor play a lot. Look, his base is still looking quite empty. The red Gondor player has, like, a much healthier or wealthier base. But again, Mordor's eco is just too good at this point of the game. The outpost, 
He couldn't capture it because the Hobbit, very smart move from the Red Condor player, he was able to deny this. Very smart and very important. Those steps are actually quite uh, game changing steps. If you kind of mess up, if you give Mordor too much of your territory, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know the English word for that, but you're, you know, you, wanna, you don't want to give him too much map control, too much area of control. Because capturing those two outposts for Mordor would mean he will have insane amount of vision control, he will see all your action before they can ever reach out to the Mordor castle, which will obviously increase his reaction time big time. But very soon, and with very soon, legit now, the Mordor player will be able to recruit some soldiers of Rune, which are gonna act like a pikeman and counter both the cavalry from the Gondor team. You know, they are both going for horses, which is kind of very important, because it's a big map, and with only one calf, you can't... You know, go for both the sides, that's not possible. The Hobbit has been taken down, the Mordor player will be able to recapture this. And I believe that's going to be the first outpost Mordor will be capturing. Yes, sir. But look at this Rohan player. We, what is going on? To be honest, I didn't expect that. He was capturing both these outposts, and that's not kind of, you know, I gotta say the map is not very balanced, because as you can see, the two outposts here are very close to each other, while this outpost and this outpost are not. You know, it's not symmetrical. And uh, our maps, our goal for the patch 2.22 and for the new maps uh, are that we want to make them always symmetrical. That means nobody has an advantage being on either side of the map, you know? Okay. Creeping, no problemo. The money has been left on the field, that's not good. Uh, easy creeping for Rohan too. I mean, Rohan is doing a phenomenal job in this game. Gondor cannot even play the game. Most people don't realize and everybody likes to play Gondor, but trust me, if you master Rohan, you can actually crush everybody. Like, Rohan is not a bad matchup. Rohan is good against Isengard, very good against Mordor, and also very great against Gondor. You know, in every single situation, in a 1v1, 2v2, 3v3, 4v4, 3v4, all, Rohan is always a really reliable and overall super strong faction, which has an incredible early game with the Rohan, spam, you know, spam of the peasants, very strong mid game with the early cheap Rohirrim and easy upgrade, easy leadership from Theodin King. An insane late game with Rohirrim Archer with full upgrades and leadership from Theodin, eventually Glorious Charge. Elma, the strongest 1v1 hero in the game, Aragorn with Andrew's Sword, is just too OP. <laughs> and then you have also Gimli Legolas, Elvin for the counter of the Nazgûs, of the Trolls. Like, legit. The only problem with the Rohan faction is this, the weak siege. That's the reason why Rohan needs to finish the game against Gondor early game. Because when Gondor camps with Trebuchet, it's hard, but not impossible, to break through the defense with Ants. Because Ants are very vulnerable against fire. Okay. Gondor cannot fight this, as you can see. They are getting outnumbered, and with fire, they will now get the chance to hit like a truck. And we need... Uh, the game changing point is going to be definitely... Uh, you know, it's going to be definitely Ganelf. Um, the white Gondor player has the power points for Ganelf, and he's recruiting him now. If you're wondering why he was building three statues here, by the way, it's because they give you the hero bonus, reducing the cost of your heroes by 30% when you have four of them. We've he has three the here city. and one here, so he gets the maximum value. It means Gandalf, a hero who normally costs you 6,000, will now only cost you 4,200. And after recruiting him, you can demolish every one of them, and then replace them with farms or blacksmiths or whatever. But uh, when it comes to recruit expensive heroes like Gandalf, for 6,000, building, uh, you know, four statues are gonna, it's gonna make him way cheaper, and you will get the chance to recruit him this way way faster. There comes Gandalf, but we need another one, you know, <laughs> another one. This Gondor player will also need Gandalf, and he has almost the power points for it, but he still needs like round about uh, tricky to get the chance to recruit the White Wizard. Okay, I mean the outpost is gonna be definitely taken down. He has armor too, yes sir. But he has not the shields. Shields are very important when you are dealing with combos, archers, or even horse archers. Because it's gonna make you way tankier against arrow damage. Okay, I mean, Rohan is pushing from the bottom. He has fire arrow purchase on the Rohirrim Arches. He has double outpost, but I think in long terms, they're going to be both taken down. Armory now for the heavy armor, banner, plus forge blades. Mordor, in the meantime, is going for the Witch King. And that's what happens if you can't hurt Mordor's eco early mid game, you know? 
I mean, he was trying to deal damage to the farms, but I think it's just not enough. Nobody was ever able to destroy the mill behind. It's all about to hit level 3. Like, the money is just, you know, <laughs> coming in clutch for the Mortal player. And Witch King is going to be a huge hero because he will be able to support the Rohirrim and Rohirrim Archer from the Rohan player with additional damage and armor leadership. He gives you the same leadership like Turing King, but the... Oh, Faramir. <laughs> oh, Faramir. Run, my friend. Oh... I mean, he has heal, right? Yeah. Kill him! Don't lose him like that! Okay, he healed him. Okay. In the last possible second. Oh, beat! Oh, he was beating him, but Witch King was paying attention. He will get in safety. Okay, in the meantime, the outpost has been de destroyed. And with Gandalf, the Gondor player, the white Gondor player at the bottom right side, was actually able to reclaim a bit map control. There is also Eoma, but he's only level 1. The thing is... A Rohan would normally struggle in the situation. When you have no Theorin and no Eoma leadership, you cannot deal damage to Gandalf. Or at least not, you cannot burst them, you know? But it's okay, because your ally is Mordor, and your ally can give you for free, pretty much with Witch King and Eye of Sauron, 100% more damage. And you have Theorin now for 50% more damage, 150% more DPS. And with the Eye of Sauron, you will be able to level up way faster, and that also includes your hero Elma. So when Elma is around the Rohirrim Arches, if they are killing something, you can get experience, share experience with them, and get from level 1 to level 4, you know, in like a second. And then, Gandalf cannot play the game anymore. You cannot approach a Rohirrim Archer army with this much leadership with your Gandalf. Rohirrim Archers are also countering heroes at the same time. The creep was still remaining on the field, by the way, that's kind of crazy. Like, you need double Gandalf. Oh, beautiful! <laughs> but you need double Gandalf action here, by the way, guys. You need double Gandalf, and you wanna Easter Light this Witch King with both your Gandalfs at the same time. He's gonna use Easter Light here on. On. Oh, he hit them both, but. You know, you cannot one shot, of, of course. Oh! This kind of is popping off, he's playing out of his mind. But the thing is, Lightning Sword all alone cannot kill the Witch King. So you need to combine it with your Easter Light, for example, to burst them. But Easter Light was just used to damage Theodine and Elma. And Witch King can heal up next to the Rohan well in a few seconds, you know? Just put him next to the well and he can get to back to full HP in like 3 seconds. Look the regeneration, dude. That's kind of crazy. Mordo will eventually lose this outpost. He's now going for the Troll Cage, almost level 2. And another Nazgul will be, will be recruited. And remember what I was saying at the beginning of the game? Having the chance to recruit three flying creatures, three flying heroes in a map like this will give you such a huge uh, room for map controlling fights. And in the worst case scenario, because Gandalf can't be everywhere and he has only uh, you know, a couple of spells that can hurt the flying heroes, for example the Easter Light. But if you have three Nazgûls or two Nazgûls in the Witch King, who is he gonna kill first? Even if he kills one of them, you know, or two of them, you have still another one, you know? The farm here will be also taken down eventually very soonish. Mordor is kind of pushing. The outpost is going to go down first. And Faramir is almost level 5. That's going to be quite nice for the additional armor leadership. But very soon, we will need to transition into the rangers. So when it comes to capture and protect the outpost, Gondor will have to recruit archers and then put them inside the citadel and try to kind of... Look, the thing is, the distance between this castle and this castle is big. So what you want to have is you want to have an outpost in between. So when you pressure this base, you don't want to have to walk all the way back to your own castle for recovery and healing up. That's why outpost control is very important. But you need to control it and protect it. So you don't want to buy it and lose it five seconds later, like this is happening right now. You want to have some sort of protection, which means you will need to recruit some archers, Maybe even trebuchet um, and also tower guards. And obviously, as long as Witch King wanna fly away, you cannot catch him. Like, Gandalf cannot catch Witch King, that's not possible. Okay, you can be annoying also with the Witch King, by the way. You can keep attacking the Citadel all the time and force the Gunner player to build up multiple towers, which will cost him lots of money. Ooh, son, we missed this almost! What a juicy and beautiful visa plus on your face, son. And look at him. Gandalf is popping off. 
Dude, the camera movement, guys. We moved to this area just in the last possible second. We didn't see the preparation. We didn't see the preparation of the Visa Plus, but it was a juicy one. He killed the vast majority of the Rohan army, including their king. Dude, uh, that was crazy, man. I like that. Dude, that's what I'm talking about, guys. You know, Gandalf is your solution to all your problems. You know what I'm saying? Very important and very awesome hero if you get the chance to make plays like that and get experience because this, you know, not only he will get the chance to unlock the Word of Power with level 10. No, but every time he levels up, his abilities are gonna deal more damage. You know, very important. Okay, the outpost here is going to be taken down. Rohan, in the meantime, is trying to reclaim the map control. And that's the, that's that's what I was trying to say. You need archers to protect the outpost. Otherwise, you will capture them. But after a few seconds, you will lose them. Because you can't be everywhere. It's a huge map. So you want to secure yourself. Um, he's eating. What happened here, by the way? Did he lose Ganav? No. Ganav is still alive. But this guy is almost only level 6. Almost level 6. Not even level 6 yet. And the good thing is... With the drama troll being nearby and witch king being around, the trolls are quite tanky. So you cannot one-shot them. Even your easter light cannot one-shot one of the trolls. So if you cannot one-shot them, it's okay for the mortal player because he can always eat a orc. And this has no, no cooldown. So he can keep eating all the time, you know? <laughs> Looks like meat back on the menu, boys. Okay. I will be used. Now Mordor should, Gondor should run. Faramir. No, not Faramir. Dude, he's just a dude who's trying to show his quality. But he gets slapped. In booms and level 5 troll. The attack troll. The, the king of the trolls. So we're gonna have a very rough situation here. Uh, Mortal player is pinging and saying I'm going ham here by the way. And there comes the reinforcement but only one archer. What can the one archer do against such a reckless seat? Leadership you can see them glowing, shining bright like a diamond. You cannot even hurt them anymore. With the darkness, witch king, drummer troll and eye of Sauron. Holy quackamole. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sorry I was kind of... <laughs> um, yeah. There comes Elma, and also the darkness gives also leadership to the Rohirrim archers and Rohirrim, you know, they gotta also get way, way stronger. And that's a, that's a problem now, the Gondor, uh, the Gondor, Gondor team get. Because if Mordor wants, he can just take down the outpost in a second, you cannot defend this with only one or two archers, or not even with like three, four archers, you cannot defend this. And after taking down the outpost, he can just start sieging your bees. The amazing thing about the trolls is, you know, that you can destroy literally everything, including walls. You don't have to go for siege weapons with the Mordor faction. Legit, your trolls can do everything for you. They can siege, they can destroy heroes, they can destroy structures, and they can destroy armies. So, pretty much what Gandalf is for the, for the Gondor faction, trolls are for the Mordor faction. And look, that's so strong, you know. Like, this is very, very strong combination to it. Rohirrim archers... Um, the thing is, Drummer Troll don't give leadership to the Rohirrim Arches, only Elma, and Witch King, and Darkness, and I, and Theorin does, only, I know, <laughs> but it's still more than enough, you know. They will also glow very badly now with the with Theorin King, Outpost will be captured by Rohan, which is very smart, because in the worst case, you know, the Rohan well in this patch is able to heal up monsters, but the Gondor well isn't, so... Um, we fixed that in the patch 2.22, obviously, but that's not the patch 2.22, that's the patch 1.06. And there were quite a lot of bugs, as for example, the healing from the Well of Rohan, it wouldn't, uh, it would heal the monsters, you know, and Nazgûl's Witch King, but the Gondor Well wouldn't. And you see the damage output, dude? That's kind of nuts, right? <laughs> That's kind of odd, man. Look, Witch King is tanky enough. Oh, but he needs to pay attention if the Easter Eye can be used. Oh, he got chunked, though. Holy moly, he got chunked by the rangers quite a lot. You gotta pay attention to that. We missed the action. Gandalf is running for his life. He's almost level 9. He got slapped. We just got slapped. <laughs> it's not worth it. Like, the thing is, you don't want to trade your Gandalf against anything. Including Witch King. You don't want to do that. The only thing it would be okay to trade your Gandalf for is the Balrog. So when you get the chance to kill Balrog, and then you die afterwards, it's worth it. Because killing Balrog is gonna give you not only, like, 10 power points at the same time. But also... Gonna get kind of low to level 10, and obviously you will eventually be able to save your castle this way. But other than that, it's just not worth it, you know? Ganav is just too valuable to lose and trade for anything. And now you need to invest almost 1800 for reviving him, and Mordor can revive the Witch King just for free. So it's definitely not worth it. Uh, the two parts of the wall have been broken. In the meantime, the Gondor player, the white Gondor player, look, take a look into the minimap, boys. He has, like, legit full map control. Like, this player is just getting too much value, too much money at this point. But we cannot say the same thing about the red Gondor player. He's kind of doomed. 
There is a level 9 Gandalf, who's gonna be extremely powerful. Uh, 4 power points in the bank. We have Gondor player here, the white one. He has almost 6 power points in the bank. That's gonna mean the Eagle summon. But what can Eagles do? I think they're gonna get legit one-shotted by the Rohirrim Archers. They cannot play the game. And the Mortal player is up to 5 power points after the uh, Darkness. So he needs like 15 power points for the Balrog summon, which is still a long way to go. And there comes the counter push. But we have only one single archer. In this patch, you know, Boromir was very useless. And nobody would ever recruit Boromir. But if you play this matchup now in 2022 on the patch 2.22, Boromir would be definitely needed, especially to get the you know additional damage leadership. Because when it comes to fight against trolls, you don't need armor leadership. Your armor leadership doesn't mean anything. Because if they get the chance to hit you one time, they will one-shot you, even if you have like 100% armor leadership. It doesn't matter anything for the trolls. But what matters is damage leadership on your archers and rangers. So you can one-shot them or kill them before they can reach out to your backline. If they reach out, it's too late, you know? I mean, this push is kind of meaningless. It's a level 9 archer, but I think it's just too weak. He's gonna invest money to repair the wall, which is... I don't know about that. I think you are kind of too poor to do this. The outpost could be captured by the Red Gondor player. He could build three farms here just to get money. I think that's very important. In the meantime, Rohan uh, Gondor player is pinging, but there are arches inside. Now it's gonna be harder to destroy. Okay. The Witch King is dead for the, for the next 20 seconds. I think Ganaf is gonna be back on the field a bit sooner. Yes, sir. Yeah, reviving Witch King is for free, but it's gonna take you a bit more time in compared to other heroes to be revived. Ganaf is gonna join the battlefield now. He has been sent back until his task is done. The outpost here is going to be taken down. This kind of is very dangerous. He's level 9. Faramir. <laughs> Faramir. My captain of Gondor. And what is this push all about? What is the purpose of this push? You cannot just send one archer Faramir to, to Gondor Knights and hope that this is going to be enough to win you the game. You cannot do this. Gondor Knights, they can't even play the game anymore. Level 6 Gondor Knight dies like it's like nothing. It's like orcs. Because there is just too much leadership. That's the problem. That's the problem, boys. Parami, there is another one, level 3. Oh, beautiful shot with the trebuchet. Uh, here is going to be used, there is Gandalf. So, the Rohirrim matches, they got to be careful about two things. That includes Gandalf, first of all, and then the trebuchet. Because trebuchet are just like cut, uh, trolls. They don't care about your ammo leadership. They will hit you very hard. He's pinging this, okay. I mean, he shares the same idea with me because I believe that's going to be the best idea if the Gondor player, this red one, captures this and builds three farms on it. He has also this outpost for a long time, actually. Level 2, level 2, with arches for the protection. Rohan was able to recapture this one. And as this was happening, Rohan was able to reclaim a bit more of the map control. But it's still good uh, for the white Gondor. Like, he went even for the Stormworker, for the, for the laser towers, for the Numenorean Stormwork. Look at this beautiful white shining bright like a diamond wall. It's gonna be quite tanky. Um, the red condo is pinging his ally and saying move please so I can buy this. Yes sir, that's good. But this push, I don't think it's gonna be a good push, you know? Like this army is just not strong enough to withstand against this army. Look at this, Rohan army here from the right. Orc archers, combos, drummer trolls, plenty of trolls. We have a witch king and two Nazgûs being around somewhere. Very powerful. Very, very powerful and almost impossible to deal with. There is one Gondor Knight. Save him if you can. Marketplace could be a nice investment. I think uh, you lost the opportunity when you have like map control like the white Gondor player had a couple of minutes ago. It would be a perfect choice to go for the Marketplace upgrades. So the Siege, like randomly sieging with one trebuchet only. But let's be real here. It won't be too, too effective. The trolls are coming now from the other side. Um, this Gondor player cannot hold this. There is no world in which he can hold this. Darkness is available, I believe. Yes, sir. The Eagles can do eventually something, but as long as there are so many Rohirrim matches on the field, you can't. You can't. Yama is level almost 4. He's looking for a chance, for an opportunity, for a Visa Plus, but there is another leadership source. That's going to be Aragorn now with the Anduri Sword. You can see the blue Jedi Sword in his hands. Lightsaber. Almost level 40 in King. So, as we are talking, without Glorious Charge, without Elma leadership, this army has right now, and oh, by the way, almost level 4, 
Let's assume this guy is gonna get level 4. That means 60% from this dude, 50% from this dude, 50% from Theodin, 50% from Witch King, 33% from the Darkness, 50% from the Eye. Do you, do you know? There's like crazy multiplier numbers. And that means one Rohir Marche is gonna be as strong as like four of them. Like one of them is gonna hit as hard as four of them at the same time. So Ganoff can't really do much about the situation, but boom! But they are not level four yet. But even now he's getting chunk. Do you see this? Do you see this? That's what I'm talking about. Gandalf cannot play the game. Too much leadership, boys. That's like the worst case scenario because not only Gandalf died, but also Elma got now level 6. It means he has also leadership now for the Rohirrim Arches. Holy cockamole. The Eagles though, they are cleaning up the trolls, no problemo. But you see the trolls? Look, this comma, please. Pew, pew, pew. You see this? I'm Guys, leadership is the key to victory in this game. If you ever play this game yourself, multiplayer, single player, doesn't matter, make sure to make quality over quantity. Make one, two units, but provide them with enough leadership. Drummer troll, invest into heroes like Lords early game to get him to level five. You know, go for war chant. Choose great battles in which you know that you have more leadership available than your opponent does. And then you can demolish everybody. Like not even heroes like Ganov can do anything about the situation because everything in this game is able to stack with each other. To be honest, the only way the Gondo Gondo team would have been able to deny that from happening is actually going for the, you know, trading one Gondo for the Isengard faction. Because Isengard can shut down more, you know, in the mid to lead game, but in this case, nothing can shut down the Mordor player. The, you know, the, just too much leadership. The second end will be summoned from the right Gondo player. They both lost Gandalf, by the way, in level 6 Gandalf and level 9 Gandalf. This Gandalf is already back on the menu, uh, but can he even play the game? That's the question. There is Gandalf level 9, he's gonna use the Easter Light on Witch King. Witch King gonna get eventually... No, he didn't use it. What? Did he cancel it? Ah, I think he was used... Uh, something is wrong with my game because I cannot see the Nazgûls on the field. The Nazgûls for me are invisible. We just saw one of them getting blown up, but he's invisible for us. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> there were two Nazgûls somewhere on the map. We just cannot see them. Okay, I mean, to be honest, the Gunner player is getting a lot of power points here from killing all these trolls because the combos were kind of demolished. The, uh, the Albin Warriors from the Alliance summon. We have three power points for the White Gunner player after the Eagles. We have 15 power points for the Mortal player after the Darkness. So he's only five power points away from the Baldrock special summon, which means game changing or in this case, even game ending because in the previous versions of the PFME 1, the Balrog was indeed able to easily, I mean, not even close, easily destroy a full Gondo castle by himself. We, we tried to nerf him in the patch 2.22, but, you know, he's still, and you micro very well, you can still do that. Um, Rohan play is up to 4 power points after the Alvin Wood, Alvin Alliance, and also the Anduri Sword. He needs, like, 2 power points for the ends, or 3 power points for the Cloud Break, so he's still far away from the Army of the Dead special summon. The Gondo player here is up to 4 power points after the Eagles. So he needs around about 6 power points for the EOD. So from all the players, the closest player to the ultimate special summon is gonna be the purple mortal player Principino, because he needs only a 4 power points. And remember, evil factions can gather the power points a bit faster in compared to the good factions, because evil, when you lose units, you get also power points. In good, you can't do this. So more there's this under this control, you know, three farms for Rohan. More map control on the side from the gun, uh, from the Rohan Mordor team is expected because when there are Nazgûls on the field, it's very hard to just randomly send out Rohirrim or Gondonites out of the field and hope that you can reclaim some of the map control because unprotected Gondonites, they're gonna go down every single time to the Nazgûls of the Mordor player. I mean, it's a very rough situation. Uh, Ganav has been killed once again. Uh, too many Rohirrim arches, dude. Just too many of them. Did he, did he also lose Ganav? No. His Ganav is still somewhere on the map. He's here. They are shooting a Nazgul, as you can see. Let's see. We're gonna see a death of an invisible Nazgul. We see arrows hitting something. Yeah, you see, invisible Nazgul has been sniped, boys. Ganav was able... Uh, no, Ganav wasn't able to finish him off. But he's really close to level 10. I would love to see a War of Power moment. But we might not be able to reach this. Because Mordor is just spiking crazily hard. 
Like, he's gonna push now with combos, catapults, witch kings back on the menu, lots of trolls. The outpost doesn't stand a chance. And you wanna make sure to demolish those buildings in time, to deny him power points, because look how many power points he will get after destroying the statue. Please, pay attention to that. You see, he got more than a quarter power points. Like, some buildings, like statues, uh, you know, those sentry towers, for example, or wells from the good factions are actually very valuable. Um, and you want to make sure to demolish them yourself. If you don't demolish them, you will feed your opponent a lot of power points. And I don't need to explain you how important power points are in this game. They are just too important. Especially in this game, when you get the chance to get closer and closer for the Balrog summon, which can legit win you the game. You want to make sure to deny that throughout the entire game. You know, paying, paying attention to that in the late game is going to be kind of pointless. You want to pay attention to that from the beginning of the game until the end of the game. And if you pay attention to that, you will see that in most of your games, your opponent will not be able to get AOD summon or Balrog summon. Because it's not about him be playing good, it's about you playing bad. <laughs> you know, I don't want to flame you, but make sure to save your build, you know, units, your, your heroes, and demolish your buildings just in time. Your farms, for everything. When you know you cannot save it, demolish it. Not only you get some of the money back, but also you deny experience points and power points, which are very important in Battle for Middle Earth 1. Okay, now the siege will begin. Now we feel in like a, in, <laughs> like in a Minas Tirith situation. And Rohan won't help you because Rohan is actually against you. In the meantime, we miss another beautiful wizard plus. Unfortunately, guys, I was not paying attention. Beautiful, the, witch, the eagles, they give you 500 gold for each kill. It's a very, you know, not good idea to just use randomly like a lightning sword there. The Gondor player is disengaging. And the last thing you want is that the, Gond the Rohan player will manage to get into your media range with, with Aragorn. If Aragorn gets the chance to hit you a couple of times with his Blade Master and Andrew's sword, Gandalf will get one-shotted. Like, Gandalf is very skillful, high damage output uh, hero, but he's also very squishy at the same time. He cannot tank damage for a long duration and... You are looking for the small traits. He's like a mage who doesn't really do much besides having spells, which are very powerful, yes, but he can he doesn't have the durability to just you know stand still and take damage for no reason, you know. I mean, even though it kinda is nuts that he has like a crazy attack damage, like 150 melee damage is kinda crazy. But when you, when you look at Aragorn, for example, he has only 72, <laughs> you know, but Gandalf is attacking so slow while Aragorn is attacking way faster than him. You know, the outer attack animation is looking smoother, and with the Bleed Master, you can boost the damage a bit. With Andrew's Ward, you can boost the damage a bit. Even though it displays otherwise, trust me on that one, Aragorn still is way stronger sword, sword man than Gandalf is. He's chasing, but, you know, Gandalf can just disengage. Kind of wasted the Glorious Charge there for no reason. 17 power points in the bank, need only 3 more power points. He is playing small, uh, slow, which is very smart. You don't have to rush things here. The defense from Gondor is pre pretty strong, but trust me, Mordor can afford to lose more than this Gondor player can, because he has almost no map control at all. He's trying to fish power points at this point, but the, the Nazgul has been taken down, the invisible Nazgul once again. Um, and summon available for the Rohan player. He might actually go for a sneaky attack on this castle. I mean, which would be kind of dangerous, to be honest, because this castle is very strong with the stone Stonework upgrade. Numenorian Stonework plus the Laser Towers. There comes the Eagle summon. They want to kill the Drummer Trolls or what? I don't know. We should try to kill the Catapults, in my opinion. Okay. Yeshiel needs 6 power points, the red corner player, and the white corner player has almost the EOD. Almost. Like, he has the EOD right now as we are talking. Boom! That's a beautiful Wizard Blast from the red corner player with Ganoff. Almost level 9, actually. He's level 8, so he needs also only 2 levels for the, for the War of Power. This Ganoff was able to get away. Nearly level 10. Needs around about a quarter level to get the War of Power unlocked. Okay, I mean, the thing is, with this much leadership from Rohan, with Theoden King, with Elma, with Darkness, with Witch King, with Eye of Sauron, with Aragorn, they won't even die to the War of Power. Especially not when they have the Glorious Charge. They're gonna be almost immune to damage. Yes, you can knock them back, but you cannot finish them. AOD will be summoned for defense to deal with the Mordor forces. He's gonna use the... Oh, they wanted to use double E study on, on Witch King, but he will be able to get only 
one hit and dodge a second hit. Okay? And the question is now Mord oh, Mordor, dude. He's so close. Like, that's so much feeding, by the way. Like, guys, losing Trebuchet in this game, they, it's gonna cost you around about a thousand resources for every single Trebuchet you're losing. You don't wanna send them mindlessly forward. It's kinda pointless, you know? Okay, boys, so we gotta pay attention now to Balrog. Uh, how epic would it be if we would get the chance to see double Gandalf against one Balrog? Can you imagine that? Oh, 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 what a cinematic movement. Oh, in between, pew. Oh, okay, nice, nice. Run, 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 run. He's gonna use Easter Light. Hold on a second. They can actually kill him, maybe. The Vip has a long cooldown. If they hit, oh, the Lightning Sword is on cooldown. But this guy's the Lightning Sword. The Eagle's gonna be special summon now. The Vip is on cooldown. He can keep flying all the time. Breath Fire, don't walk into it. He's gonna use... Oh my goodness, they're killing the Balrog, they're killing the Balrog! Run, run, run! Yeah! Dude, that was kind of crazy. They kited him pretty nicely. I mean, look how much... How, how many resources... It, you know, how much resource it took, actually, for the double Gondor team to kill Balrog. They, he, they needed two Gandalfs and the Eagle Summon for that. But the good thing is, the White Gondor player was getting the last hit. And I will show you guys how many power points do you get from it. He went, he got enough power points for the Cloud Break. And he's going for it. Boom! Cloud Break, what a power combination. But as I was saying before, they don't die. They are too tanky and Gandalf cannot lift that. Gandalf cannot lift that. You can't. There is no way. Dude, the amount of tankiness these units have, even though Cloud Break is reducing their armor by 30%, can you imagine they are still strong enough to withstand one of the mightiest power powers of the game, the War of Power. They don't die, not a single one of them died. Too much leadership, Glorious Charge, Theorian leadership, Witch King leadership, too much armor with Darkness being available too. And even though it was looking phenomenal, the Double Gondor player where, uh, team was able to actually destroy Balrog, but like 30 seconds later, unfortunately, they lost the castle, which is like a huge win condition now for the Mordor Rohan team. They can just capture this because I believe Rohan has enough money to buy this. Yeah, Rohan, look at Rohan's money, dude. He has nearly 20k in the They're bank. He's super rich, like richer rich. I mean, to be honest, it was a great game, though. I mean, I don't care. Like, when it comes to cast those games, to be honest, I don't care about who's gonna win or lose. That's not the, that's the least important thing for me. But what I'm looking for are those crazy plays. You know, things we don't get the chance, we don't get the chance to see very often. Like, for example, two Gandalf against Balrog, you know? <laughs> you know, they used the, two Easter Light, Lightning Sword, Eagles, Balrog Beefy, Balrog Tanky Boy. I mean, I believe the Gondor player didn't get defeated yet. Yeah, he got defeated. He got defeated. Yeah, it's gonna be a 2v1 situation now. I believe this Gondor player wanna camp it out, but you, you can't win. I mean, let's be real here, because the Rohan player is also the EOD now. You're, I mean, he wanna get Gandalf back on the menu, but Gandalf level 10 has a really long revive time. Oh boy. <laughs> I mean, they are making sure to get map control at this, at, at this point. Rohan summoning the Elven allies against Gondor Knights is not the best idea. You, the problem is, I believe, in my opinion, the main problem was that this Gondor player never went for archers. You know what I'm saying? I mean, to be honest, he doesn't have too much money for it. But that's also kind of his mistake. You know, going for this upgrade. Because let's be real, okay? The question for you guys in the chat, in the comment section down below. How valuable was this structure for the Gondor player? Let's be real here. He went very early for the Nomonorian Stormwork, for the, for the Laser Towers. Um, and I believe this building is now inside the castle for the past 15 minutes of the game. And not until now, not a single unit has ever reached the castle of Gondor. And for me, that's the reason why this was a complete waste of money. Imagine going for the marketplace instead. You know, for the Grand Harvest, for the Iron Ore. Or imagine going for the Archer range and recruiting some Archers and sporting your ally. Because at the end of the day, you have to deal with trolls. You have to deal with two Nazgûls, Witch King. You have to deal with Rohir Marches, and that means you cannot go for the cavalry and hope that this is gonna be enough. You cannot do this. Because Rohir Marches are gonna counter your cavalry. Nazgûls are gonna do the same. Witch King is gonna do the same. Trolls are gonna do the same. While your Arches could literally counter everything from the Mordor Rohan team. 
and that's very unlikely situation. Gandalf won't be able to rejoin the battlefield as Tita has been destroyed 10 seconds before the Maya could been sent back to the Middle Earth until his task is done. But looks like his task is done to Dean because the Valars are not gonna send him back. I mean, they were trying to, but no internet connection, I believe. Okay, I mean, Triple Siege. In those kind of situations, I really wish that Mordo had the chance to get Grunt. You know what I'm saying? Like, really tempted to add Grunt to the gameplay of Mordor. If I'm being honest with you, I'm really tempted to, you know, that we can add Grunt to the level 3 Siege Works of the Mordor faction, which can deal with, you know, kind of those, tank, you know, camping players. The Siege has begun, the Balrog. There is no Gandalf, there is no War of Power, that's a huge force of Rohan. The War of Power, the AOD is on cooldown, the Breath Fire will be used to kill the backline buildings. The Rohan player doesn't care, he just gate rushed the Gondor player inside the jeans. And that's gonna be the last stand of Gondor. And Mordor Rohan. Dude, imagine that in the films. Imagine if Rohan, the Riddermark faction, would actually team up with Sauron from the Mordor faction, you understand? Imagine how powerful this would be. And that's the demonstration for this one. Erendil has been defeated. And the victory goes to the Rohan Mordor team. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If, if it was enjoyable, if you had fun while watching this, I can't even talk. Uh, please make sure to leave a like on this video. And also subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, stay beyond standards. Peace out.